Noah, are you seriously making another video about cassette recorders? Yes, I am. And if you don't like it, I honestly don't know why you're watching this video. Well, now that we got that out of the way, that out of the way, um, this cassette recorder that you possibly see before you, this one right here, is the Caliphone 5272AV, which I will not be doing a full demonstration of. Oh, nice. I love emails. Um. Which I will not be doing a full demonstration of because YouTuber, I believe his name is JRC Studios, already has a video, a full demonstration of this exact model on his channel, which he posted a couple of years ago. Um, but if you don't feel like watching his video or you haven't watched his video, I will do a slight demonstration, just a very basic demonstration of this cassette recorder. Um... I started recording, need to wait for, wait for the leader to go by, and it's already by. I'm recording on the Caliphone 5272AV. This is designed for school use. I love tape recorders that have this feature, automatic and manual level control. Right now it is on automatic level control, which means if a source is loud enough, it will turn down the level according to the volume of the source. But if I switch it to manual, right now on the recording you'll hear nothing. But I could turn it up all the way and speak quietly and whisper right up to the mic. Or I could make a very distorted recording and speak really loud, really close to the mic. If I wanted to make a background noise free recording, I could just do this. Speak right up to the mic at a low level and then switch it back to automatic and then we rewind and then even though it has full auto stop, which means it stops and rewind and fast forward, I went ahead and stopped it. Now you'll hear the recording. Wait for the leader to go by, and it's already by. I'm recording on the Caliphone 5272AV. This is designed for school use. I love- Listen to how good this records. It has this feature, automatic and manual level control. Right now it is on automatic level control, which means if a source is loud enough, it will turn down the level according to the volume of the source. But if I switch it to manual... And now you get to hear the distorted recording. I could turn it up all the way and speak quietly and whisper right up to the mic. Or I could make a very distorted recording and speak really loud, really close to... Another feature I love about these recorders is cue and review, which allow you to rewind and fast forward but. according... I mean, um... Hear what you're listening to as you're rewinding and fast forwarding to more easily find a place. Um, but now that we got that little demonstration out of the way, what we're talking about in this particular video is how I guesstimate the age of cassette recorders. And you can hear my heater kicking on, probably. Um, probably a lot of people use this method, I mean, because it's, it's you know... It, I've experienced this a lot. This cassette recorder is from the mid-1990s, at least. Possibly the early 90s. Um, there are multiple ways to tell this. The first way is the cord. I, I don't know if you, if you can see the cord or not. Um, this is this is this is very hard. I don't know if you can uh, see the cord, but if you can, great. You'll notice how it's all one wire. But on older uh, cassette recorders where the cord is hardwired in, you see both wires in the same cord, not unlike this cord, which is uh, just a regular power cord. I don't know if you can um, see this cord or not. To be honest, um, I'm probably doing quite awfully at this. Forgive me, please. Um, that is just a um, non-polarized figure eight AC cord. Yeah. Um, another way you can tell is the order of the buttons. I'm gonna be awful at showing this. So uh, from left to right, we have record, play, rewind, fast forward, stop slash eject, and pause. Um, on older cassette recorders, not all older, but most of the older ones, all, pretty much every cassette recorder you'll find that's from the 70s, this applies to. The button arrangement is way off. Like, for example, on my Panasonic RQ309DS from, uh, 78 or 79 or so, the button arrangement 
from left to right is record, rewind, play, fast forward, stop, and eject. There is no pause on that particular model. Um, and also, uh, the most obvious way to tell if it's a newer cassette recorder is if it says made in China. Oh, what a wretched, wretched label. And guys, guess what? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. This Caliphone is made in China. But, it's one of the decent things to come from China. This um, Caliphone 5272AV is one of their better products. Um, Caliphone is a brand that uh, manufactures or manufactured record players and uh, tape recorders for school or office use. Um, <clears throat> this 5272AV, it has a 5-inch speaker in there. You might have seen me lift up the pause button. I, um, I, mm, I, I don't like to say this, but I'll say it anyways, because it's a useless feature. When I was uh, getting inside of this thing to kind of examine the belts and why the auto stop wouldn't work, because auto stop didn't work on any of the tape recorders I got over the holidays, because that's just my luck. Um, I think I jabbed a screwdriver into the wrong place, and thankfully I only broke pause. Everything else is working fine. Even auto stop is working fine. Like this, you're playing, and then gets to the end of the tape, and it stops. How wonderful. So that's pretty much how to guesstimate the age of a tape recorder. Um, most of those rules apply. Um, in the 70s, pretty much all of your tape recorders had Made in Japan labels, and then the late 70s and early 80s came, and you saw Made in Taiwan, um, and then the mid 80s came, and you still saw Made in Taiwan, but you also saw Thailand, and Malaysia, and Singapore, and then the late 80s, when quality of electronics really started diminishing, with some exceptions, of course. And then you started seeing Made in China, yippee. Lastly, I will show you how to identify um, whether this is made for portable use, whether tape recorders are made for portable use or um, school use. The ones made for school use, such as this one, are um, most of the time they are bigger than this. I have a cassette recorder from Kmart from 76 that is actually a good deal smaller than this, and they even made handheld cassette recorders back then. Um, were tiny compared to this. A lot of times, if you get a school cassette recorder that's used, you can see etchings on the side. Um, this particular one came from Chapel Hill High, I, if, if I remember correctly. Another way you can tell, look on the side, this side, many, many headphone jacks. You see, oh, uh, I think it's like six headphone jacks and a hookup for an external speaker slash headphone. And then you see an auxiliary input, that's to hook up an external source that is not a microphone. Then you might see a microphone and remote. Pretty much every portable tape recorder has microphone and remote inputs. Not all of them have auxiliary. And I love tape recorders that have auxiliary because if I want to record music, I don't have an attenuation cable. And if I hook up a regular source to the microphone jack, you know, the um, impedance ratings and such are not the same. So your recordings come out very distorted. Even if the tape recorder has both automatic and manual level control. Man, that's fun to say. Automatic and manual level control. Okay, I'm done rambling and ranting now. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I'm sure the actual visual aspect of this video was absolutely bloody horrible and it made you want to die. Of course, that was an over-exaggeration. Alright, that's all for now. Goodbye.